uh, <clears throat> discussing the harmony at the level of nature and existence and in that in the previous session we discussed about the four orders in the nature now we will study the four orders in detail so the discussion that we had so far in the uh, introductory workshop uh, now we will go about discussing the four orders in little more detail and the process remains the same whatever is being said here the proposal and we can see that fresh exploration starts on the issues but ultimately it boils down to verifying the things on our own right and then moving accordingly and then validating in our uh, behavior as well as work to understand the whole thing now detailing upon the four orders so these are the four orders physical order bio order animal order and human order in physical order we have units like soil metal non metal air water all these things in the bio order we have plants trees in the animal order we have animals and birds and in the human order we are there now we can study their activities so why these four orders have been yeah. made distinct why they have been put separately we are kindly put it in the presentation mode yes sir is all on kindly put it in the presentation mode अच्छा जी फ्रॉम योर आईट इज इन प्रेजेंटेशन मोर ओनली नो नो समटाइम जूम क्रिएट्स कम हिकअप्स या कैनली स्टॉप एंड शेयर अगेन भैया जी जी हाउ अबाउट नाउ भैया या नो परफेक्ट नो परफेक्ट कैन यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग परहैप्स मे बी ओके जी ठीक है ठीक सो वी स्टडीड अबाउट द फोर ऑर्डर्स ऑफ द नेचर इन ब्रीफ इन द प्रीवियस सेशन नाउ वी विल डिटेल अबाउट various issues associated with the four orders various uh, reality associated with the four orders so the four order are physical order bio order animal metal non metal air water such units in the bio order we have the plants trees in the animal order we have animals and birds and in the human order we are there yeah. now going further to study each of these orders we can study the activity so what is the activity there in the physical order so if you look at all the activities in the physical order they can be clubbed into two parts one is formation the other is deformation for example you construct a house how do you construct a house by adding one brick over another so this is formation isn't it but how was the brick made the brick was made by deforming the soil so the soil got deformed and a brick was formed now the bricks join together to make the building and tomorrow if let's say earthquake comes and the building falls back to the soil what has happened now the deformation has taken place now everything that that we can do with the physical order is in the domain of formation and deformation we make machines we may make satellites we may make tall structures whatever we do ultimately everything that we are doing in terms of physics and chemistry if you see we are trying to study the formation and deformation isn't it how the formation takes place how the deformation takes place if you look at the bio order you see that there is activity of formation and deformation along with there is activity of respiration and respiration essentially means inhaling and exhaling so this is an added activity so the bio order has the activity of the physical order in addition it has the activity of respiration so if you look at the plants and trees okay they have respiration and a plant continues to be in the bio order so long as the respiration is there when the respiration stops it goes back to the physical order even in the same plant if you see let's say the bark of the tree which has got dried up or the dry leaves when the respiration stops then that part of the plant goes back to the physical order isn't it so a unit is there in the bio order so long as the respiration is there so in the bio order we have these two kinds of activity so formation deformation is there in addition there is respiration and respiration essentially means inhaling and exhaling now if you look at the animal order in the animal order we have body as well as the self now the self is not there in the bio order the plants if you look at the animal order it is coexistence of two different kinds of units one is the body and the 
other is the cell. The body is the same as any unit of the bio order. So in the body, you can see the activity of formation, deformation, as well as you can see the activity of respiration, isn't it? Now, if you look at the cells of the animal, there's activity of selecting and testing. So the animal does make a selection and it has, uh, it is associated with taste also. For example, you bring a puppy in the house, bring it Tommy, and you do it repeatedly. Now the, uh, this dog, this puppy, tastes the sound of the word Tommy and then gets conditioned and then makes a selection that now when this word is pronounced, I will go running to the other person. Initially, when the puppy was listening to this word, it was not coming to you, but now it is able to make the selection. So there is a selection here. It's not only recognition and fulfillment. There is some assuming involved here. And on the basis of that, the selection is there. Now the same word Tommy pronounced to some other dog will not have the same kind of response. So in the same dog, we can see that the uh, response has changed as the selection has changed. And you can try to verify this with other dogs and we see that a different kind of selection is taking place. Now, when you are pronouncing the word Tommy, the dog is responding in one manner. But when somebody from outside is pronouncing the same word, it is responding in some other manner. manner. So the selecting and testing is there, isn't it? In the, the dog, which belongs to the animal order. Similarly, if you have parrot, you are selecting and testing in the self of the parrot and so on. Now, when you look at the human beings, you'll see that the body is just like the body of an animal and just like the plants and trees. So there is activity of formation and deformation. If you look at the, uh, like your own body, you know, there is activity of formation, deformation taking place by virtue of which it is growing. Then in, in our body, we can see that uh, the cells are getting formed as well as they are getting deformed. So the cell has a certain life, maybe six months or something. So in the, after a certain period of time, the cell gets deformed and the new cells also keep on getting formed. So the formation, deformation is there. We can also see that the respiration is there. It is there in the body, it is there in every cell of the body. Isn't it? And the same thing has been happening there in the body of an animal. The same thing has been happening in the plants and trees. Now, we of course have the self and we are able to study it. We have been studying it. So when you study the self in a human being, for example, if I study myself, I can see that I not only have the activity of selecting and testing, I also have the activity of analyzing and comparing, something that we studied on the second day. And there's also activity of imaging. So the imagination is much more enhanced there in the case of human beings as compared to animals. The animals do not have the activity of imaging, analyzing and comparing. Largely, it is limited to selecting and testing. And we not only have these five activities, we also have the potential for understanding, the potential for right understanding. So that is there in the self of the human being. If there is any question up to the discussion, uh, uh, regarding the discussion that we had so far, please raise your hand. I'm lowering all the hands for once and also removing the mic from which, uh, the names uh, where it is appearing earlier. Okay. Vinayji. Uh, uh, namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste, Bhaiya. Uh, actually, we uh, were discussing that insects uh, do not have brains, but uh, they can see, they can smell. They can uh, respond to the activities, so uh, they can also feel the uh, sense of danger, and all these things can happen. Now, oh. how does this process, <coughs> process? If there is no brain, uh, if there are sensors and there is no processor, how does this get processed? Uh, regarding what you are saying, sir, Bhaiya? about the insects. Insects, okay. Yeah. yeah. So for that, we can look at the anatomy. So. Like in a plant also, you can see responses keep on taking place. The plant is also responding, isn't it? Through recognition and fulfillment. The response is there in the plant. The response is also there in the body of animals. The response is also there in our bodies. But this is only by virtue of recognizing and fulfilling. Yeah, but it is said that uh, the uh, insects have brains, but not uh, as it is in the form of uh, animals and uh, human beings. 
but it is spread over all the body that is what uh, i have uh, 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 re read somewhere yeah so it has to be a fully developed brain which can accept the instructions of the cell if the development has not taken place to that extent then it will not be able to coexist with the self okay okay yeah so this is something that we can study uh, yeah and we can find out so on one hand we can look at the anatomy of the uh, insect on the other hand we can also look at the response whether there is any change in response or not for example there is a touch me not plant the moment you touch it it shrinks okay so it may appear to somebody that the plant is very shy but that's not the case it is only recognition and fulfillment so any kind of physical touch will have the same kind of response in the touch me not plant yeah still uh, it's uh, it was not very clear to me okay still i need to understand that okay thank you very much okay bhaiya sunita ji sir sir can, am i audible sir clearly audible ma'am yeah so actually uh, the activity of uh, animals uh, selecting and tasting is there in the self and in human beings also uh, along with imaging analyzing comparing we have selecting and tasting so uh, is it same for animals and human beings or in human beings it is a uh, little more um, uh, advanced because human beings as we know they have a mind and animals uh, they act on intuition uh, so there i had a doubt actually that selecting and testing in the cell is it same in case of animals as well as human beings yeah so if you look at it the activity of selecting and testing is there in the self of the animal as well as the human being in our case it is more advanced more complex yes because uh, like the selecting and testing is also taking the guidance from imaging and analyzing and comparing so yes. in the animals it is prima facie in response to the uh, the information from the body but in our case them there is some imaging in the cell there is some analyzing and comparing going on and that's how the selecting and testing is taking place yes. for example you just uh, uh, put your hands over the body of a puppy and we'll see what kind of response it gives you can tell now you do the same thing with a human being now human being will try to analyze why is person behaving like this does he have some <laughs> work to get done from me okay am i being uh, enticed into something isn't it so so yes. many things are taking place here isn't it yes. so the activity is there the selecting and testing uh. activity is there but uh. now if you see the imagination is much more advanced here as compared to then to the animal so there will lot many things entering here in terms of taste isn't it and that's how the selection may be different on different occasions yes the variation in the selection will be quite different yes sir got it sir thank you sir yeah second thing that you mentioned no we use the word mind so mind has been associated with two uh, in two different ways sometimes mind is associated with only the activity of selecting and testing so the animal also has the mind human also has the mind sometimes okay. it is also equated to all these activities imaging analyzing comparing selecting and testing okay hmm. so when we say mindfulness or something we yeah. are trying to be aware of all this yeah right. okay yeah so, thank you sir thank you गीता जी भैया नमस्ते भैया जी नमस्ते भैया फॉर द प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डिसेक्टिंग द बॉडी कंफाइंड ब्रेन एंड देयर यू मेड अ स्टेटमेंट लाइक द सेल्फ एसोसिएटिंग विद द ब्रेन कैन यू एक्सप्लेन अ लिटिल बिट मोर भैया से इट अगेन द लास्ट पार्ट यस भैया द सेल्फ इज एसोसिएटेड विद द ब्रेन हम्म when we dissect the body of a brain of a butterfly you said you cannot find a brain but mm -hmm. in animal you can find a brain where the self get associated with the body through the brain yeah so the self can associate with the body with a particular organ in the body which is called as brain mm -hmm. because the instruction that we give to the body mm -hmm. okay has to be have to be uh taken by the body isn't it now a conscious unit is giving instruction to a material unit so there has to be some part in the material unit which can accept the instruction 
And when the information is being passed on from the material unit to the conscious unit, there has to be some part in the body which can do the job. Mm. So that particular organ, that particular part of the body is termed as brain. But uh, my question, Bhaiya, how can we clearly say it is that brain that is uh, associated with the self bhaiya uh, yeah so for that we have to study ourselves we have to study how am i so in fact to understand the whole nature you have to understand yourself mm. so you, you try to study yourself what is happening in you are these activities taking place in you or not now when you are coexisting with the body how are you giving instruction to the body and how are you taking information from the body is it through brain or through some other part the more clarity you have about your existence, you will be clear about the existence of other units also. Mm -hmm. So how are you getting information from the body? How are you giving instruction to the body? For example, when I'm talking to you, I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. Now I am making the selection of words. Now how mm -hmm. is that selection being transferred to the body so that the mouth can speak and the words can come out? So we have to be observant. We have to be observant of the complete mechanism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is happening in the self what is happening in the body and what is happening in the coexistence of self and body mm -hmm. but yeah, we say that uh, self transacts with the body through information mm. so only information is passed uh, brain is a medium yes, yes so brain is a part of the body a physiochemical mm -hmm. unit Okay, and you are able to pass on the information to the brain, and from there it gets uh, passed on to other parts of the body. Mm -mm. But my question is not to the other parts of the body, Baya, but to the conscious unit self. Yeah, so for that you have to study how you are coexisting with your body, how you are giving instruction. So for time being, you can keep it open. <clears throat> for mm -hmm. time being, you can study yourself in place of reaching some conclusion, prima facie. Mm -hmm. You can keep it open, observe yourself. What is happening in you? What is happening in the body? In fact, the exercise two that we had discussed on the second day was pertaining to this part of the understanding. So how am I coexisting with the body? How am I giving instruction to the body? How am I receiving the information from the body? How even am I aware of the body? So try to make out, how do you know that the body is there? It is through mm -hmm. sensation from the body, <clears throat> isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, who is getting sensation? You are getting sensation. Yes, Bhaiya. And through that sensation, either be it sight or you know, uh, some other thing, uh, you are able to make out that the body is there. Mm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, like a very crucial part of this whole discussion is that we have to sharpen our observation. Otherwise, mm. only the information will keep on getting transferred, but the observation will not take place. And unless mm. the observation is there, exploration will not take place. Mm. It will only remain as a set of information. Mm. So okay, observe yeah, yourself. Yeah. Observe mm. yourself. How you are giving. So when you are talking to me, mm. you are speaking, isn't it? Mm. Now how mm. these words are coming out? Who decides the words? And then from uh, where does it get uh, to the body and then from how, then how come does it get uh, uh, in, uh, converted into some sound and so on mm -hmm. try to look into the whole mechanism mm -hmm. the whole process mm -hmm. okay. but yeah, in that case it's really a wonder and surprise by uh, how in science we are studying the parts of the functioning of the body without touching on to the conscious part, Bhaiya. It's a gross mistake, Bhaiya. Yeah, so the issue is that <clears throat> the self can study the self. An instrument cannot mm. study the self. An instrument can only study the effect of self on the body. So through that, we have been trying to make some conclusions. Okay, But mm. they will only remain as a kind of assessment that will not form the right understanding. Mm. To understand the things rightly, I have to work on myself. I have to observe myself. I have to be aware of the imagination in me. I have to be aware of the coexistence of body with me. Isn't it? I have to be aware of my presence in space. So 
certainly when you are working with the physiochemical instrument you can only study the physiochemical activities mm. but if you have to study the consciousness activities then you have to work at the level of consciousness itself mm. then only things will become clear mm -hmm. really it's very interesting bhaiya day by day we are <laughs> yes. learning new terms new insights bhaiya and really right. this part is very interesting bhaiya today's afternoon session with the brain communicating the consciousness unit and thereby to the entire part of the body very interesting bhaiya thank you thank you so much bhaiya nice nice didi dr bhuvaneshwari then we have uh, sandhya ji bhaiya uh, thank you uh, i would like to share one story if you allow uh no no <laughs> if you ask a question directly that will be good just some... okay. yeah it was it just just now the madam the way is the she said i really agree uh, i i remember i read one somewhere in old china people used to pay to the doctor uh for not getting the diseases and if they are going to get the diseases the doctor has to tell 6 months before otherwise doctor has to pay to the uh, person so the science was uh, evolved up to that level in ancient days so what you were uh, saying can be correlated very uh, rightly that it's not just about the body part it was about the everything and the whole how the body works and how the mind is correlated yeah, yeah but here. there is a little disconnect here <clears throat> when you okay. talk about health Mm -hmm. okay whether you come to know um, before one gets unhealthy or not you are again studying the body itself now we are talking about the self also now, yeah it was with respect to the overall uh, mental health also uh, i didn't elaborated more about it okay yeah. the science was developed to that extent with respect to mental health uh, the body was studied and it was told 6 month before what is happening with respect to body and what care has to be taken nice in fact now itself we can say that if somebody is not happy in continuity okay then there are going to be multiple health issues so if there is happiness in the self in continuity then the self is able to utilize the body as an instrument rightly otherwise the misuse will be there of the body and then multiple health issues will crop up so this is something that we can say proactively also so in the process of ensuring the right understanding we can also see how our health has been improving is it fine yeah ji bhaiya ji uh gangaram ji and then we have seema patel ji uh bhaiya uh, just in continuation to sandhya ji is uh, uh, comment um Uh, in traditional practices this is a reflection that has just come to me in like a revelation i have always wondered in uh, our eating practices fish has even like uh, all other things like chicken uh, mutton they have been shunned by uh, a lot of people but fish has been easily accepted uh and fish is a part of the diet of a lot of people uh, whereas they do not take uh, any other form of non veg uh probably going by what we have just uh, you know uh, right now the lectures the fish does not have any uh, you know that kind of uh, brain or you know so probably in a traditional system that has been permitted as a part of the diet uh, this is just a speculation but yeah, it yeah, just yeah. to me yeah so <clears throat> if you have this clarity uh, where to put the fish then we can see our role with the fish but at the same time we have to make sure that we are consuming food for health and not for taste mm -hmm. so yeah if you are consuming something for taste and not for health then it is going to be harming your health so so we can understand what fish is we can understand what insect is at the same time we have to also understand what will be the right program for health if that is conducive to health well and good thank you thank you bhai <clears throat> so nice we are discussing the activities in the four orders going further we can study the innateness <clears throat> now if you look at the physical order the innateness the physical order is existed now what does it mean so it continues to exist the form may change the properties may change but the existence is there 
it continues so innateness essentially means the self organization being in a definite order now if you look at the physical order it exists it is a reality and it exists in a definite order so it will not cease to exist any unit of physical order will not cease to exist now from here you can draw another conclusion uh, something for you to explore further that this whole existence had been there is there will continue to be there isn't it because the physical units are going to continue and the conscious units are also continuing so the physical units have the innateness of existence so they have been there they are there and they will be there throughout isn't it at the most what can happen with the physical unit the form and property can change for example you take hydrogen okay you take oxygen and you take water so hydrogen and oxygen can combine to make water but the hydrogen atom continues now hydrogen atom may have so many subatomic particles okay oxygen atoms will have so many subatomic particles water will also have subatomic particles now each of those is going to continue the combination has taken place because of which the property has changed because of which the form has changed but the existence is there so this is something which is innate to the physical unit now if you look at the bio order existence is there as well as growth is there now as we studied that in the bio order we have the activity of respiration and with respiration there is growth so a unit continues in the bio order so long as growth is there now the growth will be there uh, when the respiration is there so the activity will be there of respiration along with formation uh, and deformation and you can see that growth is innate to the bio unit so the existence is of course there anything that is there in the existence will continue to exist now if it is there in the bio order <clears throat> the growth is also there now if you look at the animals the body is just similar to the bio order as we studied earlier so in the body of the animal there is existence as well as growth so the body of animal is made up of many atoms and molecules which exist which continue to exist they may not be there in the animal body okay but they are there in the existence isn't it and the growth is also there if you look at the self of the animal there is will to live will to live means that the self wants to continue isn't it so if we study the conduct of an animal you will see that there is a will to live in the animal because of which if there is some question of survival it will act in another in some way okay and this will to live can be made out in the animals and birds if you look at the human being you will see that the body is just similar to the body of an animal and similar to the plant also right there is the existence as well as growth so if you study your body you'll see that the existence is there and the growth is also there and that's how our body has been growing since childhood isn't it now if you study it closely you'll find that the body is made up of so many organs organs are made up of so many tissues tissues are made up of so many cells cells are made up of so many molecules and atoms right and each of them each of the atoms has been continuing today it is your it is part of your body sometime earlier it was not part of your body so something you consumed as food okay because they are in the nature they are there in the garden in the forest maybe in the air in the soil okay now it become a part of your body now next time it again is going to be part of the nature it is not going to be a part of the body let's say the fecal matter comes out and it goes back to the nature or certain parts of the body get deformed and it goes back to the nature so the existence is there right so long as there it is there in the body growth is also there now if you study the cell you will see that there is will to live with continuous happiness so an animal just wants to live 
but we just don't want to live we want to live with continuous happiness and this will to live with continuous happiness is there in the self it's not there in the body this is something that we have been studying so the will to live with continuous happiness is there in the self not in the body now this will to live with continuous happiness is fulfilled by right feeling and this right feeling is ensured by right understanding some hands are raised okay tara prasanna ji asking what do this hyphen and comma mean okay so where have we put okay now here this hyphen means formation deformation if you look at the bio order the hyphen is put here to indicate that there are two words and plus means this is an added thing there as an activity there is formation deformation as well as respiration similarly here there is existence as well as growth now here again if you see in the body we have put formation deformation and there is a hyphen put here ji uh professor nachiketa uh kumar ji ji now this uh, will to live uh, is in self isn't it yes and uh, the animal order has that will to live so the animals uh, have souls or self self okay yeah. now this butterfly or the insect belongs to the animal order no i am so, not saying that i am not saying that huh? we are not saying that insects belong to the animal order <clears throat> so insect will belong to which order bio order oh bio order but in the bio order there is only plants and trees so how can how butterfly is not a plant not a tree yeah so here we can in fact we have not made that extended list here you can put here small uh, the insects also in the bio order this is something that we have been discussing oh that means in the bio order you are putting plants trees and insects also insects also even the small fish oh i see okay 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 ji ramnath choudhary ji okay if some question is there then you can raise your hand so we studied the innateness <clears throat> there is some other hand raised yeah miss gurleen sir but uh, isn't there a will to live even in insects i mean if we even try to swap a fly it tries to save its life so what would we call that then so how do we know that this is will to live this is a physiochemical activity that is taking place that is taking place in the plants also like a stimulus you say yeah. right a response okay. to any stimulus yes okay okay thank you Dr. Satya. Uh, so my question is also very similar to that because I feel that uh, somehow the insects and uh, small fish being put in bio order, I I still cannot uh, completely comprehend that because uh, if they are put in animals and birds, they are very similar, more similar to the animal order. I I feel it. So. Uh, still that thing of putting it in bio order like plants and trees uh, i i still could not uh, get that so let us keep it open ma'am but we can also study the uh, literature available for these insects ants and there have been so many studies done and we we'll see that uh, what they have been able to come out with but this is an information that we can get from the literature or from the other studies Okay. Uh, that the response is very much definite. It is only in terms of recognizing and fulfilling it. There is no difference in the response. The difference comes only when the stimulus is different, and that is why virtue of recognizing and fulfilling. But if you see in the case of human being, if you see in the case of animals, the same kind of stimulus can generate different kinds of response. Now, for example, a sunflower plant. Okay. Now, as soon as the sunlight comes, it turns toward the sunlight. now one may say that it has affection for sun <laughs> isn't it but mm. that is not the case it is only a physiochemical activity but for the insect it is not the same uh, for a plant maybe we can say but for an insect 
it actually starts behaving more like the animal like for example uh, if you take an ant uh, so ant also it it uh, if you try to uh, hit it or it it uh, the collection of food that it does it does not do it for itself or himself or herself it does for the whole family and uh, if you try to hurt it also uh, like for example if you hit the ant even though its leg is broken uh, one part is broken it will try to pull the food and take it back to the family so that is very similar to what an animal would do or uh, you know study, human yeah you know you study a plant also okay so even if you uh, cut off one part of the plant Mm-hmm. the plant still keeps on absorbing the minerals and the uh, yes, water yes 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 <laughs> so that is happening in the plants also in fact there have been studies on ants and it has been found that uh, most of, well, like the activities that are visible in the ants hmm. they are how they are physiochemical so when the ants move they keep on uh, dropping some chemical and uh, the other ants will follow that chemical there has been so much of a study done on ants but let us get exposed to that and Let us keep it open. I am not asking you to assume anything. Yes, yes. Uh, the good thing will be that you start exploring because see, one possibility is that we were assuming things in a particular manner. Now we have started questioning those assumptions. Yes. Isn't it? Uh, Now yes. the task is to understand it, and we'll see that to understand each of these orders, you have to understand the body and the self in a human being. So you have to understand yourself. You have to understand the body also. You just see the body. how complex uh, functions keep on taking place in the body it may appear that they are all conscious activities isn't it hmm. now if a part of the body uh, let's say is not performing well then how the other parts of the body uh, start performing isn't it so hmm. uh, kumar ji so yes. we will we will call the vertebrates uh, into the animal order and the invertebrates into the bio order sir i think now when we go to use these uh, technical words no we have to study the meaning of these vertebrates and invertebrates the basic issue is we have to look at the response if there is activity assuming then the self is there if there is no activity assuming okay okay not there. okay let us keep it open okay um sir one more question so this is through experimentation Uh, this reason of putting insects into the bio order is it that like through certain studies or experimentation it was decided that let's try to put it in this order and then explore more uh, is that true like some uh, old books or some literature is, as you said no i'll say that we have to see the reality as it is so as an observer you have to see the reality but to get some hint about the reality you can collect information but that information will not help you seeing the they will not ensure seeing the reality it can only help you getting some idea about the reality because if the person who has made the studies preconditioned in some way that same preconditioning will get transferred in you yes yes so ultimately yes. ultimately at some point of time you have to observe so what we are doing as an exercise right now we are trying to get some idea about the reality <clears throat> through discussion but at some point of time you have to be the direct observer and where to observe how to observe so you have to start from yourself so observe what is happening in you and what is happening in the body many times no when you are not able to observe it you may assume yourself to be the body looking at the functions of the body you may assume that these all are happening in me or looking at your functions you can assume that the same thing is happening in the body but that is not the case in fact to understand the whole nature you have to study yourself because in the nature as you are discussing earlier also and we'll study it tomorrow also there are only two kinds of units material and consciousness now the self is the consciousness unit body is a material unit so you can study the whole nature by studying yourself and the more clarity you get about yourself you get clarity about the other orders in nature also mm-hmm. Okay, ma'am. We have oh. just started the journey. <laughs> yes, sir. yes, sir. true, true, true. Yes, I'll I'll try to explore. But yeah, if yeah. we feel that uh, it could be there in the animal order, is that uh, uh, a broad area? Could that uh, uh, some discussions lead to that, or it is uh, like uh, it's it's said that it is no, it should be in the bio order. I I just have this question. Yeah. 
I know it's not any enforcement. I can understand that, but uh, it has been done through a lot of studies, right? So when everything is being said, we are hearing this. We will explore, but I want to say that uh, quite a lot of um, uh, not experimentation, but stuff is there which says that uh, insect is there in the bio order. This is just my question. Is it true, sir? That's there. See, the conclusion is always going to be yours we are not going to intervene with that okay yes, yes that's true that's true i, I have seen through the, all the process correct yeah. yes yes yeah. okay okay thank you sir thank you and the issue is that if you are not able to understand the nature as it is then you are not able to define your role also with the nature uh -huh. for example for example let's say uh, very small microorganisms like viruses and all isn't it mm -hmm. now if you are not able to understand what they are whether they belong mm -hmm. to the animal order or bio order because mm -hmm. they can also be termed as insects. Then you may have a feeling that if you breathe, you are killing something. Mm -hmm. So you may assume that my survival is dependent upon the killing of something else in the nature. Okay. Then you're not coexisting. Then you're not, you may say that nature is mutually fulfilling, but you are yourself able to see that you're not fulfilling the nature. You are killing certain things in the nature to survive which may not be acceptable to you naturally. And then what is your program? Would you like to continue or not with this? Okay, so this was the thought behind putting that into bio no, order. No, I, I, no, 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 that was not no. the thought. That okay. is not the thought, but I'm just saying that if you do not understand the nature rightly, hmm. you will have multiple contradictions in you. Contradictions, okay, okay. Okay, so yes, uh, yeah, I, can, I can understand this point of yours clearly. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ramnath Chaudhary ji, you wanted to say something else? Ramnath ji. Okay, some more hands are raised. Mr. Rabind, uh, Rao ji, Rabind Rao ji. Uh, namaste, namaste sir. Ji, namaste. Uh, uh, namaste, uh, just uh, insects and small, small pieces are put in the bio order. Uh, because insects are made out, out of soil, because like white ants, they are made you know, purely out of the soil. So out of my observation, I can see that when uh, even some uh, we put some water in the, the the soil, some small pieces are automatically generated. It, it's a, my observation that we have not put any piece or you no, know, they are uh, automatically generated small pieces. So that that that's why I think it is it is it is put in the um, bio order because everything is made. Uh, part and parcel of the soil. So that that is my observation. Just. Uh, okay, okay. the discussion on this uh, insects are made out of you know, this bio order uh, and this much I can say. Ji, ji. Nice. Minu Didi, you wanted to ask something, then we have Gita Didi. Bhaiya, I want to ask, how do I, how do I convince myself that some order can assume or not assume? How do I know this? So you have to study the response. <clears throat> Okay, so you have to see the response to a particular stimulus. Okay, and then see, find out. But ultimately, see, when you are uh, trying to study all this, then you are studying through sensation. So you are observing something and getting some uh, information about the other entity, and then you are drawing some conclusion. Mm -hmm. But this all can only be a kind of guess for the other entity, and it may remain as a kind of assumption in you. Unless you observe yourself different from the body, these kinds of confusions and con uh, assumptions will remain in you. So the core point is to observe yourself different from the body. The more clarity you have regarding the coexistence of self and body at your level, the more clarity you will get about the rest of nature also. Otherwise, it will only be a kind of ass assessment. Okay, Bhaiya, I understood now that the more I try to observe outside, I will only be looking at the body of something, be it a plant or an animal. Yes, yes. The more I look inwards, the yes. more I understand my own self and I see myself as different, but in coexistence with body, that will give me more clarity about why the this classification has taken place. Am yes. I right, Bhaiya? Yes. Otherwise, what you try to get as an information about the rest of nature is through sensation. And mm -hmm. sensation has its limitation. Ultimately, you are going to associate some meaning to the sensation. Mm -hmm. Something that we've studied earlier, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that meaning is colored by your own assumption and preconditionings. Mm -hmm. At the most, you can make a very sharp analysis. 
Mm-hmm. But the basis of analysis remains as an assumption. So if I feel that when I water the plant, the plant becomes happy, I am, I am only looking at maybe the physical, uh, the physical signs given by the plant. Maybe it perks up. Maybe the leaves go up. But uh, yeah. I am, I am not doing an internal observation, and yes. so it is faulty. Correct, Bhaiya? Yes, yes. You have made a kind of assumption there that the plant is getting happier. ऑर्डर they will not have pain when we cut the plants and trees can we draw yes. that conclusion also by yeah? certainly, the cell certainly so you can eat plants of course <laughs> otherwise how will you nurture your body mm-hmm. and in the process of eating plants you are not uh, killing the plants there is no self there which can get dissociated mm mm-hmm. okay in fact uh-huh. to even determine your food to understand your food you have to mm-hmm. understand the whole nature uh, it's a pity that throughout our civilization we have not been able to understand what can be termed as food and what cannot be termed as food because we have uh, if we are not able to understand the nature as it is right mm. then it is very difficult to decide uh, what should i term as food or not mm mm isn't it mm mm nice let me proceed uh, there mm. will be multiple multiple more questions maybe they will get responded thank you, thank to also you. gradually now if you look at the inheritance okay inheritance means how conduct is decided maintained generation after generation so the physical order if you see the inheritance is constitution based the conduct is decided by the constitution the same example that i was taking hydrogen and oxygen combining to make water now if you look at hydrogen hydrogen is something that burns with a pop sound oxygen is something that helps in combustion helps in burning and water is something which uh, if there is combustion then this water is going to remove it okay so if something is burning we put water on it so it has a completely different conduct so the conduct of hydrogen is on is of one kind conduct of oxygen is of another kind and conduct of water is of another kind now how is the conduct being decided that is being decided by the constitution that is being decided by the constitution of the particular entity isn't it so whatever we study in the physical order ultimately the conduct is going to be decided by the constitution now whatever we are doing doing in terms of our research in physics and chemistry ultimately we are trying to see the how the conduct is getting decided by the constitution with a limitation because we are not able to observe the reality as it is through experiments we are drawing to we are trying to draw some conclusions and this is all that we have been doing in terms of research in the physical order if you look at the bio order okay the inheritance is seed based the kind of seed that is there will decide the conduct of the whole plant and tree so for example if there is a neem seed the neem tree will come out of it and the neem tree will have its own properties if there is a seed of banyan tree a very small tree have has anybody seen the banyan tree seed very small okay and you see what a huge tree comes out of it and also like if you look at varieties of plants the kind of fruit that you will get the kind of leaves that you will get the kind of flowers that we get isn't it they are all decided by the seed so the inheritance in the bio order is completely seed based now if you look at the animal order the conduct is breed based so the kind of breed that is there will decide the conduct so largely there are two kinds of breeds in the animals cruel and non cruel so there will be one variety of animals which are cruel okay they will be cruel in conduct and there is another variety which will be non cruel 
and this is the way conduct is decided so the tiger leopard you know all these uh, animals if you see of the cat family they will be cruel but if you look at the rabbit deer all these animals they will be non cruel now in a human being our conduct is decided by the education and sanskar it is not decided by the birth or so to say breed it is decided by the education and sanskar in the same family okay we can see that different kind of conduct is there in two brothers in the same human society people will be there with different kind of conduct depending upon the sanskar that they have depending upon the education that they get and that's how education sanskar is a very essential process for the human being for the human order some hands are raised let me just have a look yeah dr seema sir i have a problem here uh mm -hmm. which is that uh, everything understanding constitution seed based breed based and all but if we put the insects and the say fish in the uh, bio order mm -hmm. uh, then uh, do we i mean uh, how will we put them as seed based yeah so what we term as seed there in the fish or the insects that will be referred to so the seed is there no you may call it something else but the seed is there isn't it so the embryo is there isn't it yeah but it's in a different uh, form of the usual bio no, order seed no 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 ma'am look at it ultimately the embryo is there in the human body embryo is there in the animal body and then embryo is there in the bio order also isn't it the same thing and that's how the conduct is decided Okay. okay, I'll explore on this. Yes. Yes. And uh, another thing, uh, Kumar ji. Yes. Uh, so the in the animal order, you say that there are two types of uh, animals. One is the cruel, where you categorize these lions, tigers. Why they are cruel? I mean, they are not killing other animals for their comforts. So cruelty. How can you define cruelty with them? They are at best wild animals. Hinsra. Which we call hinsra. So, yeah, so I, I think wild. That, yes, yes. That will be better because they are not cruel. Because they are not killing for sake of killing. No, but ultimately, if you see, uh, these kinds of animals will kill other animals to survive. Yes. For example. Yes. And yes. there will be some animals okay. which are herbivorous. They will not kill some other animal for survival. And when mostly they will be timid, they will be non-cruel. But these animals will be of different kind. So, but that's part of the food chain, the natural food chain. I'm not denying that. I'm saying we have to study the nature as it is. Isn't it? So. The animals are of one kind. The plants of are of another kind, isn't it? And we are of another kind. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a same question uh, regarding the uh, insects and butterflies in the uh, uh, bio category, mm -hmm. because again, it, uh, some contradictions and confusions I have in in my mind. Ki, if uh, man or the human being have a nerve system and sensation, so we can taste, we can feel the feelings. Thus, if I hold the feather of a butterfly, so that butterfly tries to snatch herself out of my hand. So don't the butterfly have a same sensation just like a human being? And if uh, the sensation is same like a human being, so definitely the butterfly must have a brain also. So if oh. there is a brain, then how it is being categorized in another category? And again, it is uh, categorized in the uh, seed category, in the matlab, constitution based, seed based and breed based. So it should be breed based. So seed is oh. there in the uh, human part matlab, category also. So there is a little bit confusion in my mind. Yeah. So regarding putting some kind of some entity of nature in one order or another, no, we can keep it open for time being and study okay. that. 
okay and then we can look into the anatomy also whether what body parts are there in one entity and what parts are not there in uh, that entity this is something that we can keep it open and we study see okay ultimately okay, so, huh. we want to yeah study the nature as it is okay. you know? okay but one thing is something that we can make sure that the activity of assuming is there in the conscious entity it is not there in the material entity okay isn't it this is something that we can be clear about okay. now if you find that you assuming there in particular entity let's say butterfly then keep that in the animal order if the activity okay. assuming is not there then keep okay. it in the bio order as simple okay. as this but it is becoming more and more interesting that everybody is exploring on their basis of experience and observation and knowledge so it is becoming more and more uh, matlab uh, interesting that there are new views and uh, experiences are coming on the platform so yes, it yes. is a very See, nice I'll session sir yeah nice sir yeah, yeah, yeah. ultimately you have to understand the whole nature otherwise yes. you are not able to decide your role in the nature yes yes so maybe that you try to abstain from sir from certain things <clears throat> for example you know one may feel that the microorganisms are also uh, having the self so one may feel shy in taking breath also yeah so we have to understand the nature otherwise how will i make a program for health for my body rightly yes isn't it yes yes sir. yes yes correct yeah. thank you sir thank you very much bhaiya uh, can i uh, let me proceed a bit Ji, time bhaiya. permits then i'll take some more questions okay <laughs> there are lot many questions Uh, okay, so we're talking about the inheritance. So, if you look at the human order, the inheritance is education and scar based, isn't it? And that's how education and scar is very important for the human order. So, the conduct of human being is decided by its education and scar, and human education and scar leads to human conduct. Inhuman education and scar leads to inhuman conduct. Now, if the right human education sanskar that is human education sanskar is given to a human being okay it will ensure right understanding that is gyan with which the imagination will have right feeling and with that the will to live with continuous happiness gets fulfilled and the same gets transferred to the other generation next generation and that's how education sanskar is very important generation by generation now we are going to ensure our humane living a humane society a humane conduct a humane order a good thing is that with the current civilization education has become very prevalent every child is able to go to school every child is exposed to so much of input in the education system so if we try if we are able to include these kinds of input uh, like the inputs on human values right from childhood then the child it can verify on one's own right and the child can explore the whole reality and then live accordingly with right understanding and right feeling and gradually the expression of the reality will become more and more comprehensive will become more and more easy to understand isn't it so if you understand something from here now when you go to express in your own local language then that will become more explicit to the person who is deciding locally and that's how if you are able to take this input in education it can transform the civilization it can transform the uh, generation and that's how this education sanskar process is very important so let me take one reflection here uh Where do I get the reception? Yes, <clears throat> the conduct of human being is decided by its education and scar. You can reflect on this. In the meantime, let me proceed. So the participation of human being in the entire nature, if you see, so it is in two terms. One is preservation of the nature, and second. ensuring feeling of prosperity within so how do i preserve the nature in three ways by enriching the nature by protecting the nature and by rightly utilizing the nature so for example i put one quintal of wheat in the soil and that gets converted into 100 quintals of wheat this is enrichment one quintal of wheat gets converted into 100 quintals of wheat this is enrichment now the wheat that i produce i 
keep it protected so that it does not rot in the rain so that it is not uh, wasted away that is protection and i eat it to nurture my body i do not convert it into liquor which can spoil the health of the human being so that is right utilization now in a similar manner we can think about the entire nature so my role in the nature is to enrich the nature protect the nature and rightly utilize the nature when i am able to do this correctly then i am able to ensure prosperity within i am able to fulfill my needs in such a way that the nature is preserved on one hand and i am able to fulfill my needs on the other hand so this is by protecting the innateness by protecting and enriching the inheritance and by making right utilization of the nature in line with its activity so i do need to protect the innateness <clears throat> for example for the plants we need to protect the seeds and also we have to enrich the seeds so that the inheritance is sustained okay now the plants are growing by themselves we have to ensure that they grow if we burn out the forest if we destroy the mountains ultimately we are endangering uh the being of the particular entity so we have to protect the innateness we have to protect and enrich the inheritance and by understanding the activity in each of these orders we have to make the right utilization what role can a unit of physical order play for me what role can be played by the bio order what role can be play played by the you know, uh, animal order so for example if i have to make a house i will utilize the physical order because i don't want any growth there i make a house and i want it to remain as a house i make let's say two story building and i would like to remain as it remain as two story building not growing by itself but if i have to consume something then i can consume the physical order as well as the bio order because i want growth in the body now if i need to do something physically which for which my body is not capable then i can utilize the animal order okay because my body may not be able to carry so much of load but an animal can do but of course i have to ensure that the will to live of the animal is sustained that is not endangered so by understanding the entire nature i can decide my role with the nature so i need to protect the innateness protect and enrich the inheritance and make right utilization of the nature in line with the activity or at least not violate the innateness inheritance or activity so by understanding the nature i am able to understand my participation with the nature going further so this is something that we talk to understand the inherent harmony in the nature and to live accordingly that is to facilitate a conducive environment for the activity or at least not violate it of all orders to facilitate the innateness or at least not violate it of all orders to facilitate the inheritance or at least not violate it of all orders so with the physical order what role do i have to play what role is there with me so the human participation with the physical order is to facilitate its existence by ensuring the conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring its constitution for example the constitution of earth so if i do not understand the constitution of earth properly then i may violate it i may destroy it and that's how the global warming is there resource depletion is there it is also said that we have taken out so much of petroleum and coal reserves <clears throat> from inside the crust of the earth okay that there is so much of global warming because the heat capacity of the earth is gradually changing isn't it we are burning the forest we are uh, consuming so much of uh, minerals which are not able to go back to the original state similarly with the bio order we have to facilitate the growth by ensuring conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring its seed for example seed of rice it is said that in chatisgarh not even 100 years back uh, there were 12000 varieties of rice this is documented there is a historian who has written about this there were 12000 varieties of rice and a common tradition was that whenever the season changed people will change their diet and merely by changing the diet they will remain healthy 
or if somebody becomes unhealthy then also there will be different kinds of rice to be consumed so that the health is ensured now presently the, they are not even 100 uh, varieties of rice we have lost most of the varieties of rice so for the bio order we have to maintain the seed we need to ensure that the seed is maintained for the animal order we have to facilitate care of the body by ensuring the physical facility environment for existence and growth of the body to ensure its will to live we have to ensure that the will to live is maintained so if we are killing animals for fulfilling our needs we are violating their will to live we are separating a self and a body in the animal which is not acceptable to us naturally isn't it and we have to maintain the breed for example breed of cow okay so we can of course make the right utilization of cow but at the same time we have to see what would be our role with the cow okay what would be our role with lion tiger what would be our role with other animals birds this is something that we have to understand isn't it if you look at a forest in the forest these three orders are there physical order is there bio order is there animal order is there and they are very well surviving by themselves the problem arises when the human order goes there that violates the physical order it violates the bio order it violates the animal order now what is our role with the human order it is to facilitate care of the body by ensuring the physical facility environment for existence and growth of the body so with a feeling of care we take care of the body of other human beings at the same time facilitate its will to live with continuous happiness by ensuring human education sanskar participating in developing or maintaining undivided society in universal human order so we have to understand this what is our role with the self what is our role with the body if that is not clear then we are not able to do justice in the human human relationship so for the body i will take care of the body okay by nurturing the body protecting the body and by actually utilizing the body now for the self i have to work for the feeling of relationship i have to work for the human goal we have to work for the human education sanskar and that's how we are all connected here on this platform because we have to ensure this human education sanskar so that this can make the form this can lay the foundation for the undivided society and universal human order now understanding the whole nature we are able to see our role our participation with every entity in nature now i can be clear what can be my role with the microorganisms what can be my role with the metals with the non metals okay with the birds animals with the human being isn't it so let me take another reflection i think we have already reflected on that so my natural acceptance is for understanding the inherent harmony in nature and living accordingly uh ek minute please do yeah yeah so we respond to that in the meantime let me proceed now another thing that we can study is the natural characteristic so the table would be very vast so we have not included all the orders here but largely we are studying the human being here so if you look at the human being living with animal consciousness three kinds of characteristics are to be seen one is the wretchedness the second is cunningness and the third is cruelty what does wretchedness mean the feeling that i cannot take care of my body hence i resort to be dependent on the other or in a broader sense if say, if anyone has the feeling that one cannot fulfill one's needs either of the body or the self so i have to be dependent on the other for fulfilling the need this is being wretched so if i am not able to ensure the continuity of happiness within then i try to depend on something outside to be happy either to get some sensation from the body or to get some feeling from the other so this is the state of wretchedness so unless we have the right understanding in completeness we are going to be somewhere here either we are going to be wretched or you know be in the state of cunningness or cruelty and this wretchedness is going to be a common factor here with cunningness as well as cruelty so if i have a feeling that i cannot ensure happiness in continuity in me 
then I try to depend on something outside for happiness. And that is being wretched. And uh, how do I try to depend? By getting sensation from the body or by getting some feeling from the other. Isn't it? This is being wretched. Now, one kind of conduct that could emerge out of wretchedness is that if I have this feeling that I cannot fulfill my needs on my own, I may resort to beguiling the other. Right? Now, if that is the case, this is cunningness. So if somebody is trying to play tricks with the other to fulfill one's needs for the body or fulfill the need for happiness by beguiling the other, tricking the other, playing some kind of uh, mischief with the other, then that is a state of cunningness. And if someone is trying to fulfill one's needs by resorting to forcefulness, violence, then that is cruelty. So unless we have the right understanding in completeness, will somewhere land up in this wretchedness, cunningness, or cruelty. And this is something that we can have uh, a self-appraisal for this. We can try to you know, evaluate this. Now, what would be the natural characteristic of human being living with human consciousness? So the basic thing is perseverance here. What is perseverance? Being assured that the all-encompassing solution is to understand and to live in harmony at the four levels. So I live with this commitment without any perturbation. So I'm able to see that this is the right solution. This is the solution. This is the all encompassing solution to ensure the right understanding and right feeling within. Unless I'm able to ensure this within, I'm not going to be happy. So I try every time to ensure this solution within. And when I have this solution within, I continue with this. And then my commitment is there without any perturbation. Now, with this perseverance, when I go to fulfill the relationship, then I have the commitment to help the other develop right understanding and live accordingly. This commitment to help the other develop the right understanding is bravery. It can also be termed as bravery. So this is bravery, this commitment to help the other develop the right understanding. So naturally, if I have the right understanding in me, I always feel committed to help the other develop the right understanding. This is bravery. And generosity means I'm ready to invest myself, my body, my physical facilities to help the other develop right understanding and live accordingly. So this is a very natural outcome of right understanding. And that's how it is called as natural characteristic. So whether I'm living with human consciousness or animal consciousness can be recognized by looking at the characteristic. If the characteristic is somewhere here, in terms of perseverance, bravery, and generosity, then I am living with human consciousness. But if the characteristic is here in terms of wretchedness, cunningness, or cruelty, then somewhere the animal consciousness is there. This is something that we can have a look at for our own evaluation. And also to see what would be the road ahead. So to sum up the whole thing, the physical order has soil, metals, non-metals, bio order has trees and plants, animal order has animals and birds, human order has human beings. And there's a relationship of mutual fulfillment that is harmony among these four orders. The first three orders are mutually fulfilling each other. They are fulfilling for the human beings also. It is naturally acceptable to human beings to be fulfilling to all these three orders. And the role of human beings to realize this mutual fulfillment. And for this, all that we need to do is one thing, to understand that mutual fulfillment, that is harmony, is inherent in nature. We do not have to create it. And secondly, to live accordingly. And then the mutual fulfillment among the four orders will naturally get realized. We can also see that there's every provision in the nature to live in harmony, to live with mutual fulfillment. We only have to understand this. In fact, if you look at the whole existence, you'll see that everything else than us is already in order. And here also, within us, we have the natural acceptance for harmony, for order, for relationship, for coexistence. Only that we have to pay attention to it. Only that we have to take it as a priority. Some hands are there. So I'll be taking some effectives also. Yeah, so before I go on to effectives, let me respond to a few questions. Yeah, Dr. Gita. Uh, Bhaiya, 
um, we sorry you said that there were 12000 species of rice my question bhaiya is there a possibility to get back those seeds of those 12 species bhaiya having extinct is it is there a possibility of getting back those homemade i uh, mean local or the original seeds bhaiya well for that we have to study the physiochemical condition there and then see uh, might be the case that the seeds are continuing in some form or the other and then we'll have to retrieve that but this is something which we'll have to keep open for that we have to go and collect information isn't it because uh, i'm putting the question by here because uh, is will there be a chance by here will there be a provision to get back those seeds whether it is once extinct means it is extinct forever or does oh. the nature uh, promote us to get back those seeds is there any provision by yeah yeah so for that we have to study the uh, condition there we'll have to study various plants so largely they are not to be found uh, for consumption today because the cultivation is not taking place mm. but the seeds might be remaining there that that is something that we'll have to investigate and find out by ourselves which seeds are remaining isn't it mm -hmm. so presently we are consuming very selected uh, kind of food okay mm -hmm. but earlier we had a large variety mm -hmm. in other parts of the country also you can just try to remember the food that you used to eat two generations back mm -hmm. many of those things are not to be seen today yeah they are all millets grains yeah millets grains all those things yeah by yeah what but i think uh, somewhere nature will be protecting those seeds by yeah we have to find it out because nature is very very generous by yeah <laughs> only we are project, greedy yes. <laughs> so somewhere it will be there by yeah yeah so we can take it as a project and try to investigate mm. uh, really interesting and enjoying the sessions by yeah thank you so much mm. dr shamila you had raised your hand some time back Dr. Ravind Rao. Uh, namaste. Just, just a. I want to share uh, that uh, in uh, the district where I am staying, it is uh, the Kendrapada that is Bhitrakonika National Park of Wildlife Sanctuary. In, uh, it is a World Heritage, like crocodile breeding center, uh, 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 and uh, uh, also the 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 tortoise the tortoise they breed. breed. So what we feel that people uh, you know, there are uh, the uh, it, uh, the hunters from the international uh, uh, the, the the people they came and uh, collect this that that is a great uh, concern also, but uh, it is a it is a beauty to see the observe uh, the nature also uh, when we will be seeing uh, the crocodiles and uh, in, in in the in the uh, in the, in the marine sanctuary. So that is a beauty to see and observe. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> yes. Mrs. Rupali? Yeah, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, audible. Yeah, good evening, Bhaiya. Yeah, it was a very, very interesting session and a lot of uh, information we could get uh, from this session and a lot of insight, you know, as a human, what we are doing. So I just want to, um, you know, when this inheritance word came, no? So, mm -hmm. you know, I had a little smile on my face because whenever we talk about inheritance, we either talk it about in terms of the property that they inherited from their ancestors or, you know, the looks they inherited or something like that. We never, uh, it comes to our mind that education and sanskar is something to be inherited from our ancestors. So mm -hmm. that has been told here. So it's very wonderful things. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Nice, nice. Dr. Ila? Yeah, Namaste. Namaste. No, I just wanted to also say that uh, the session was very enriching. There are a lot of clarifications that have come in, and I really wanted to thank you for that. Nice, nice, Didi. Miss Revati. Okay, so let me uh, read out the questions. So I think we have discussed this part. In which order do we place the insects and fish in the nature? So I hope the response is clear. Let me just make one more clarification here. 
so if you look at the fish so there are certain fish like whale dolphin shark so there you can see that the self is there at the brain is also there in the body and you can see their activities so you can see also the will to live there in the fish in the category of whale or shark or dolphin and you can see how a dolphin is trained so the small fish do not have the self and there is no activity assuming to be seen there but in the large fish we can see such activities and insects we have already discussed now let me ask another question who would like to respond to this what is the difference between innateness and inheritance any response to this then uh, how do we distinguish the innateness and inheritance ji dr professor meena afternoon sir ji good afternoon innateness means it is something natural default characteristics of a particular being inheritance means which is uh, uh, passed on from the genes i think am i right sir <laughs> i just now explain inheritance So inheritance applies to all the orders. So genes apply to bio order or any unit of the bio order. How about the physical order? Will it inherit something or not? Yes, sir. Okay, Dr. Geeta. Uh, G. Uh, innateness means to protecting its natural attribute. So that is innateness. G. Mm -hmm. In case of inheritance, protecting and enriching. that is inheritance by yeah okay so let me clarify okay some more hands are raised bhaiya excuse uh, me bhaiya on yes. clarification bhaiya okay uh, the previous co explorer said that we have to inherit education some scar from our parents but mm -hmm. it cannot be inherited no bhaiya it has to be developed education some scar cannot be inherited from our parents am i correct bhaiya so it has the parents... only it has to be developed yeah so that development process is to be inherited also so when we are talking about imitation following so ultimately the child is inheriting the right conduct from the parent if the parents have the right understanding otherwise the child will inherit misconduct the wrong kind of conduct so the child naturally inherits now whether, whether the parents have the right understanding or not is to be made out but the child will naturally inherit the conduct from the parents if the parents talk very loudly shout at each other fight day and night the child will inherit that kind of conduct but if the parents are living peacefully harmoniously the child will inherit that kind of conduct mm -hmm. inheritance doesn't mean by birth so inheritance means one generation to another generation mm -hmm. uh, not strictly restricted to gene which is no 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 uh, it is applies to all the orders so the physical order does not have the genes Mm. Okay, the self does not have the gene. Mm, mm. So when I say gene, it is seed based. It is largely to do with the seed. Mm, mm. But in the animal order, you can see that it is breed based. So it's not only the body that is playing the role. The self is also playing the role. Mm, mm. Okay, this is uh, something new inside. By are totally new for me. thank you thank you nice, for the clarification nice. so let me respond to this part then i'll take up another question so innateness is something which is associated with this innately something which is inseparable with the particular unit that is innateness inheritance means from one unit to another the way the conduct is transferred that is inheritance now let me read out another question what is your opinion about the plant touch me not does it have the self or not anyone would like to respond to this How about the plant touch me not, Professor Nachiketa? Uh, Kumar ji, actually, just uh, I will have a clarification that the fish dolphin. Dolphin is not a fish; it's a mammal. So we can keep it in the animal order. Okay. Yeah. So it is animal only. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Professor Mina. Uh, Miss Gurleen, so uh, we can answer this by saying that uh, it is just a recognizing and fulfilling action because that uh, the plant is uh, reacting to a stimulus. Yes. The touch me not. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you, sir. It is said that plants have life. 
is that correct or not any response to this sapan kumar ji or anybody else i have passed on the mic to almost everybody uh, monica ji good evening sir good evening sir ma'am. yes plants do have life because they grow okay so how do you define life is it by growth or something else anything that grows can you say that it has life yeah i'm not yes sir okay so this is something to be understood so the way we are defining life this word life has to be understood so life can be equated to growth if okay. that is the case then plants have life but if life is equated to the conscious activities then okay. only the animals birds human beings they will have they, they can be said to have life okay so, so we so have to be really clear it? because when we use a particular word the meaning has to be understood because one may be using this word life for growth but other may be concluding uh, it as having the conscious activities and then a wrong conclusion gets transferred okay. so they... the plants have growth but the plants do not have the self so but they do uh, have respiration as an activity yes so if you are equating life to respiration then fine but if you are equating life to conscious activities then plants do not have life Okay, okay, consciousness is life, sir. If consciousness is life, then plants do not have life. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So how you okay. are using the word life? Because this word life has been used uh, in multiple uh, ways. Kumar ji, uh, Kumar ji. Ji ji. Ah, ye pran pran life hai ya nahi? Pran ham jisko pran kehte hain. Wait. So there are two words, prana and jivan. Mm. So if you look at the bio order, it is called as prana vastha. So the bio order has prana. Prana means respiration. That's how it is called as prana bio. So mm. prana is equated to respiration. So if you are equating life to prana, then the plants have life. But if you are equating uh, life to jivan, that is the consciousness activity. That is the will to live. then the plants do not have life hmm. is that clear bhaiya may i ask a question ji ji bhaiya may i ask a question yes yes now i can take maybe only one question because then there that we keep time now yeah bhaiya what about these hybrid seeds are they violating the innateness so you have to see like uh, if you have genetically modified seeds which cannot produce seeds then you are disturbing the nature so one kind of research is going on where we have uh, seeds from which no more seeds can be produced in fact there has been a lot of debate regarding some brinjal seeds or cotton seeds yeah. okay biotech cotton and other things so there we have to be little uh, aware what kind of seed we are producing if the seed cannot produce a seed mm -hmm. then we are disturbing the harmony in the nature okay but and if you are making yeah. some change in the seed which is in keeping with the harmony in the nature well and good that can be done okay. but again but again you have to be little cautious while doing any such thing and you have to study the interaction of the plant with other units of nature and then only you can derive a conclusion from there okay and bhaiya does is human fetus having pran or jivan is it having life okay that is an interesting question in fact if you look at the human fetus so right from the point when this zygote is formed yeah okay uh, and so it's a unit of the bio order respiration is there growth is there okay and after a certain span of time let's say 4 to 4 and a half months later mm -hmm. okay the body grows to a state where the brain gets developed mm -hmm. and after that stage the self can coexist with the body before that stage the self cannot coexist with the body so up to that stage the fetus is in the bio order and after that it is in the human order so that roughly corresponds to the period of mtp no sir medical yes, termination yes, yes. 
so in the medical science also no they have observed the conduct of the baby inside the uh, fetus you know and then from there they have been able to derive this conclusion that's how abortion is not permitted after a certain period of time ji thank you bhai so i think uh, it is time now so let us go for the quiz now maybe for 5 10 minutes uh, professor manas hello kumar ji ji namaste kumar ji ji namaste uh, uh, i enjoyed this session a lot that's why i want to thank you a lot and i knew a lot of things about details of four orders uh, physical order bio order animal order human order and also i knew what is that innateness and what is that inheritance and really from core of my heart i thank you a lot because i enjoyed this session a lot but um, uh, one point uh, when you declared that uh, uh, in the last question uh, not is missing i had already submitted okay okay <laughs> actually i thought it will be one of the answers perseverance bravery and generosity and one of these i have to uh, tick and i ticked it anyhow that's not a that's not an issue but uh, my uh, question is uh, i want to know a bit more about that innateness mm-hmm. innateness of the uh, human order Will you please elaborate a bit for one minute? So, in the human order, we have the body as well as the self. So, if you look at the innateness of self, innateness is the same as natural acceptance. Sure. So, we all want to be happy in continuity. This is our innateness. And uh, inheritance for that uh, human order. So, what I inherit from the other. So, for example, what do we inherit from our parents? so what is expected is that we inherit the sanskar from our parents education sanskar yeah education is something that we get and we inherit the sanskar but both will go together so sanskar is something that we are getting from the parents from the society and with education we are adding to the sanskar and that way conduct is decided yes thank you so much thank you so much nice nice sir uh some hands who no, have not spoken so far mr ranjan mr ranjan okay miss revati uh namaste bhaiya am i audible sir yeah you are audible sir yeah audible you are audible sir like to ask no no sir your voice is breaking may i sir your voice is not clear at all okay ji revati ji thank you uh, namaste sir namaste sir really thank you because the in depth knowledge that we are getting from this workshop uh, so just would like to say thank you okay 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 <laughs> thank you all thanks to the nature the entire existence we all are a part of it <laughs> ji dr geeta bhaiya where to put microorganisms bhaiya in those four orders so again if you see the if the microorganism has respiration then it will mm. be there in the bio order but once it loses the respiration it will go back to the physical order for example viruses mm, mm, so mm, when mm. the virus gets moisture or uh, uh, proper condition then it comes mm. back to the bio order otherwise it mm. goes back to the physical order virus mm, mm. amoeba all these things you see you know uh, mm, mm. okay uh, thank you bhaiya and really bhaiya i don't know how to put it into words bhaiya nice, really nice. we are really we are grateful to the entire existence bhaiya mm-hmm. and now i can understand why all the resource persons are delivering the content with so much um, what to say it's so much dedication bhaiya it's all because of they have understood the contents and proposals of uhv bhaiya so actual uh, that is why it is reflecting in their presentations bhaiya 
I I uh, really let me just hats off and bow before you all bow. Let me say just again that we are all co-explorers. <laughs> we are exploring together, and now you are also going to be a facilitator for other uh, participants, new students. Definitely, by sure. I can understand the feel, the depth of all your the delivery by uh, the sincerity, the dedication. That's only because you have inherited the contents and proposals. That is why it is reflecting in all your uh, presentations, words by. Uh, I could feel. From each and every one of all the resource persons, Paya. Thank you, thank you so much. As you rightly nice. said, for the entire existence, Paya. Thank you. Nice, nice, Vidhi. Uh, I'll take maybe one or two more questions. Yeah, Minu ji. Then Paya. Paya. Today I am speechless with this session. I mean, I had never ever imagined sitting in a class and having so many previous assumptions totally shaken up. so thank you so much bhaiya and uh, bhaiya my problem is i am not very sure if if students ask me why we are putting some small animals in bio order how will i will i be able to give them a convincing answer no the question is not right we are not putting animal into bio order whether it's small or big okay we are putting plants trees and other such entities in the bio order which have the natural characteristic which have the inheritance innateness activity of the bio order so essentially we need to understand the bio order mm. and we can keep it open in place of labeling something as a bio unit or an animal unit we can say that you keep it open study it okay in fact our ready made responses will be of less help but the process to explore if that gets ensured in the students that will be a bigger help ji bhaiya theek hai bhaiya and thanks a lot bhaiya today's session was an eye opener thank you nice nice didi raghavan ji yeah okay deepa bhai ji 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 yeah good evening sir uh, uh, so actually this uh, uhv2 you no know, sir we are uh, giving it in our uh, uh, college and uh, when we uh, downloaded the pptis we took it from uhv.org file share and mm -hmm. in that uh, the pptis are uh, different actually i was waiting for uh, that set of ppt and we are uh, these three days we are doing something uh, different i am waiting for that uh, that ppt was something like higher activities guiding the lower activities um, Uh, higher activities of the self, uh, something like that. And uh, for uh, teaching that, we referred the videos by uh, Ganesh sir. In that video, mm -hmm. it was written as UHP three. I asked once in the morning session also. I am referring to this, and uh, it is given as UHP three. And these PPTs uh, we did not get anywhere. Okay, we'll sharing this PPT with all the participants very soon. We'll put it on a drive or somewhere. maybe some website uh, and then from there you can download no a complete set uh, which we have to teach for uhv2 certainly certainly something that we are sharing right now here no will be shared with you all uh, but uh, in that website in the uhv2 ppts uh, we are having uh, the other thing i think that is related to uhv3 uh, that only we were uh, doing in the class also no no uh, uh, maybe i will have to talk about this uh, separately with you so i okay. will have to see which link you are talking about because uhv3 is mm. another uh, course a higher level course mm. and all of you are welcome to be a part of that course also yes, when you have been mm. uh, workshop for that mm. uh, but the content will be little more focused upon the self and the existence mm. there in which we yes. yes in which we too we will have the details that we talked about so far okay okay but uh, that ppt only is there in uh, uhv2 uh, folder okay okay let me check it otherwise yeah. we will put a fresh folder there and then you can download okay sir okay yes. okay thank you raghavan ji uh, good evening sir yes, good evening uh, petrol diesel uh, these fuels are polluting the nature now the entire uh, world is moving towards uh, electric vehicles e vehicles mm -hmm. may know your comments on e vehicles sir yes you want to have some comments i mean uh, what is your opinion uh, does they do they pollute the environment nature or not uh, 
see consumption beyond a particular limit will always be disturbing the nature so here also no like one major challenge is disposal of batteries so how do we dispose of the lithium based batteries and how do we get so much of lithium also in fact if we do not uh, create right alternative to these uh, sources of energy then we may have a war again for the source of power the source of energy it is being said that in some countries the lithium resources are abundant so other countries are trying to capture them or dominate over them so on one hand we have to see what is the source of energy in the e batteries e uh, vehicles and then how do we dispose of the batteries so those challenges also have to be addressed properly in fact at some point of time we will have to move completely to the renewable sources of energy so that we can produce certain things which can be utilized for making power and then they can that can go back to the cycle in nature unless we move entirely to the renewable sources of energy and make our lifestyle accordingly it is not going to be sustainable whatever options we go for okay sir thank you sara prasanna ji Yeah, no, we have to close now. It's going to. Um, the yeah, only yeah. thing that uh, what shall we write for that plant, whether uh, it is uh, life or you know or not, life is there or not. Yeah, so that's what I said. No, we. No, that uh, part is clear. That uh, if you are considering consciousness, then uh, it is having no life. If you are considering, uh, means uh, only. Uh, what i will say uh, breathing then it is life so uh, but when we are writing answer answer is got definite answer no? so what shall we write yes so we will have to explore this word life otherwise any ready made answer may be misleading so if life is associated with pran then the uh, plants will have life if the life is associated with jivan <laughs> that is will to live then no life so uh, life and are... living living uh, are we saying the two different terms way yeah if in fact this living being when you say mm-hmm. living being it is associated mm-hmm. with the coexistence of self and body only okay so more apparent use of life is for coexistence of self and body and then we can say that no life there in the plants okay 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 bahut acha laga bhai bahut hi acha badhiya bhai thank you very close Thing. I think we can close now.